الحمد للہ وقفا و صلاۃ وسلام عبادین استفا خصوص علا افضل و خاتم النبیین محمد الامین و علی علیہ و صاحب اجمعین اما بعد فقط قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی کما ورد فی صورت توبہ اور صورت البرات اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم برات من اللہ و رسول الزین آحت من المشرقین فصیح فی الرد اربا تاشور وعلم غیر معجز اللہ و ان اللہ مخض القافرین وعدان من اللہ و رسول الناس یوم الحج الاکبر ان اللہ بری امن المشرقین و رسول فعین تم تم فا و خیر الکم وعین تولی تم فعلم انکم غیر معجز اللہ و بشر الزین کفر و بعذاب الدیم صدق اللہ العظیم رب شاہلی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل القدم من لسانی یفقہ قولی اللہ ربنا الحمنا رشدنا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہ ارن الحق حق و سکن تبا و ارن الباط الباط الم و سکن اشتناب اللہ وفقنا لما تحب و تربا آمین یا رب العالمین فدن مفلا سبحان و تعالی مجلہ والا and in working and asking his help we are starting our study of surah al-barat or surah at-tawba it has two names this surah is of a very peculiar nature in the whole of the quran and a few things must be understood before going to the translation and some explanations about the ayat of the surah al-mubarakah you know the advent of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was twofold or two pronged as you may call it the one aspect of his advent to that we can call al-bi'satul khassa That is, he was sent for the people living in the Arabian Peninsula who claimed to be following Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam who were either from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salatu was salam or they were subordinates to them. He himself belonged to that community. هو الذي بعص في الأميين رسولا منه. so that was his special assignment. the second assignment, second advent of his, second aspect of his advent, that is for the whole of humanity for all times to come till the doomsday. وما ارسلناك الا كافه للناس بشيرا ونذيرا now these two things are very distinct and you know if you don't understand the difference between the two a few issues which are discussed in this surah cannot be understood all the responsibility regarding the first bersa Al-Bersatul Khassa. He accomplished himself. In about 20 years time. He brought about a total revolution. Changed everything in the Arabian Peninsula. Eliminated shirk. Annihilated kufr. And the deed of Islam became dominant over the whole of the Arabian Peninsula. But for the second aspect of his advent, Al-Bersatul Amma, please note, he only initiated the process in the later years of his life. 
then it was handed over to the ummah to accomplish it and complete it now the first important result is because he had a special assignment special advent to the pagan arabs to the idolaters who claimed to be following ibrahim and who were the progeny of ismail and because he was from among them just as, as we have been reading ila adin akhahum huda ila samuda akhahum saliha ila madyana akhahum shu'ayba in the same way he was from among them huwa allazi ba'atha fil ummiyin rasulan minhum speaking their language and the revelation came to him in their language therefore at the end and at the accomplishment of his first assignment no concession was given to these people there was only two alternatives either embrace islam or you will be eliminated no concession because what happened to the people of nuh if they rejected weren't they annihilated what happened to people of hud the nation of ad in this very peninsula in the southern part they rejected hud and were annihilated so on that basis there was no third option given this was the final installment of the punishment from allah to these people and the worst humiliation to which they were put you know i told you the first installment of punishment qarbatul badr 70 of their chiefs lying dead and the final installment the worst humiliation challenge open ultimatum you are given 4 months or the like after that faizan salakh al ashhur al hurum faqtul al mushrikeen hay so wajadtumuh kill these these mushrikeen wherever you find this was the punishment in a different form as the punishments to the former nations but not in one form always different forms of punishment firawn and his chiefs and his army taken out and drowned in the sea 70 chieftains from quraish taken out killed at badr and then the total humiliation to which they were put this we may call the mopping up operation in the military terminology in the arabian peninsula as for the second aspect of his advent a third alternative was also given to the jews to the christians and for that matter to all of humanity either embrace islam or except to pay jizya except the supremacy of the islamic social order state or you come to the field and let us decide the matter this way or the other this alternative was given not to the ummiyin why because Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam being one of them in their own language had conveyed to them fully the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other people can have some difficulties in understanding him a barrier of language maybe they feel he is an alien person so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives due consideration to all these things that is the basic difference 
Now, please keep in mind the historical background. For about 18 years, Muhammad was fully engrossed in accomplishing and fulfilling the requirements of the al Birsatul Khas. Didn't send any Mubalik outside Arabia. He could do it. When he started coming to him, he was quite a well to do person. He had a lot of money with him. The wealth of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha was at his disposal. He could hire some persons and send the letter to Heraclius or to the emperor of Persia. No. For 18 long years. 12 at Makkah, another 6 at Medina. He was engrossed fully in fulfilling the responsibilities of the al Satul Khas, his special assignment to the people of Arabian Peninsula. Now, the Treaty of Hudaybiya, just imagine why Quran puts so much emphasis on this. We think that the victory of Makkah was more splendid, more important. In the books on Sira, you will find, you know, a very big chapter on it. But in Quran, you find something absolutely contrary to that. He doesn't even mention the victory of Makkah. He calls the treaty of Hudaybiya, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. That was actually representing that his mission is accomplished in the Arabian Peninsula. When the Quraysh were compelled to recognize him that he is a power to reckon with, when they made a treaty with him, he accept, they accepted. And they were the chiefs. Although there was no formal government in the Arabian Peninsula, but politically, economically, religiously, they were the chiefs. So, Sulah Hudabi actually marks the fulfillment. But after this, now you know this is a two pronged process. The rest of the four years, you may call them. In the Arabian Peninsula, still some work was to be done. In the seventh year after Hijra, the most strong fortified position of the Jews in the Arabian Peninsula smashed. Khaybar conquered. In the eighth year after Hijra, Makkah conquered. And in the ninth year started the mopping up operation. Cleans this peninsula from all forms of shirk and kufr. If there are any, any centers, remnants of any resistance, they must be washed off. And on the other hand, now he wrote the letters. Before the sixth year, seventh year, after Hijra, no letter, no emissary, no Muballir outside peninsula. But after the treaty of Hudaybi, the seventh year, now he is sending emissaries. A letter to Heraclius, the castle, emperor of Rome. Letter to the emperor of Persia. Letter to Mokokos of Alexandria in Egypt. Letter to Nagus in Abyssinia and so on and so forth. That was the initiation of his process 
beyond the peninsula initiation of the responsibilities of his al baysatul amma outside the peninsula he initiated the process what happened that i shall inshallah discuss later on but you can have two things due to these letters first battle of mota and the second then the journey to tabuk and that was the last now if you keep these two things in mind now please note that the first 37 ayat of this surah they discuss the culmination and the accomplishment at the final stages of the fulfillment of the special assignment of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the arabian peninsula that is why victory of makkah not under that title that is also discussed and then the final ultimatum baratun min allah wa rasulihi ila alladhina ahadtum min almushrikeen now you have no alternative no third alternative either embrace islam within a specified period or you will be put to sword open no hesitation no mincing of words and you should not also be apologetic for that matter these are the words of quran faqtulul mushrikeen haysu wajadtum but the rest of the surah from the 38th ayat to the end that concerns you know the second aspect of his advent and that is al-baisatul amma so that is why the time of revelation of these two parts is very important to keep in mind and you know there is a complication also and i will tell you why ayat from 1st to 6th and then again from 25 to 37 they were revealed in the qada of 9th year of hijri calendar ayat from 7 to 24 they were revealed much earlier in the 8th year of the hijri calendar before the victory of makkah but the rest of the surah aya 38 till the end it was all revealed through the months of rajab to shawwal of the ninth year of hijri calendar some of it before commencing the journey towards the book some ayat revealed during the journey towards the book some ayat revealed during the stay at the book some ayat revealed during the journey back home and some ayat after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the believers reached back madina there is about 3 months 2 3 months starting from rajab ending with shawwal so this was the expedition and during that expedition these ayat from 38 to 129 were revealed now the complication is that the ayat from 7 to 24 they were revealed one year before the first six ayat but these first six ayat we should be with the ayat 25 to 37 they have been taken out why this is a special style of the quran which i referred to last night also we found you know in surah al-anfal the most important issue was taken first of all ya saluna kan al-anfal and then the discussion in the same way these six ayats were very crucial very important 
if you keep in mind the political background of the peninsula, they were pronounced at the Hajj of ninth year of Hijri calendar. And they were revealed when? When the Hajj caravan had already left under the Imara and leadership of Hazrat Abu Bakr ta'ala. The Prophet didn't go himself. And till that year, the Mushrikeen and Kuffar were also allowed to perform Hajj. This is also a very important point to note. You know, the practical wisdom of the Prophet Makkah was conquered in the eighth year in Ramadan. He could have made pilgrimage. Did he do? No. Number two, he left the affairs of Hajj in the hands of the Mushrikeen. They managed the affairs as they used to manage. In the ninth year again he didn't go. In the ninth year also Muslims also performed Hajj and the Mushrikeen and Kufar also performed Hajj according to their tradition. So it was again a mixed Hajj although Makkah had been conquered more than a year before. But you know the gradual takeover. So he didn't go himself. 300 people from Medina had left for Makkah under the leadership of Hazrat Abu Bakr when these six ayats were revealed. Then the Prophet sent Hazrat Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala go. And you will have to proclaim on my behalf. And these ayat were read out at Mina also, at Arafat also, by Hazrat Ali. And it's a very interesting incident which took place. When Hazrat Ali reached, you know, because a caravan of 300 that was moving slow, Hazrat Ali was swift. So he could overtake them. So that caravan was somewhere, you know, camping. When the news came, Ali has come. He was not to come. How has he come? Abu Bakr didn't know what had happened behind him. Now when Ali went to see Abu Bakr, meet him, the first question that was asked by Hazrat Abu Bakr, Amirun or Mamurun? Have you been sent as Amir or Mamur? I must know before talking to you. If you are the Amir, you come this side. I go to that side. If you are Mamur, I must know that you are Mamur. And the answer was Mamur. Look to the sense of organization that the Prophet ﷺ had cultivated. We don't talk to each other before knowing the position. Amirun or Mamun. And he said Mamurun. But only the special assignment because it was the custom of the Arabian, you know, people. That such a, an important announcement could be made only by a very close relative of the Prophet. From his own family, his own cousin. So he made the announcement. But whenever this announcement was made, Abu Bakr was there, sitting between or standing on one side Ali, on the other Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and Ali proclaiming. So these are the six ayahs.